Good morning, TikTok Bullhorn Betty. I am unsure um, how many people are up this early. It's not even 5 a.m. yet. But I'm coming live with our breaking daily updates. This is what I do every single day for all the beautiful people out here on TikTok, for the ones that are joining. I just wanted to say that I started this whole subscription. If you guys want to subscribe to the Bullhorn Betty channel, you may. I did not realize it was on uh, subscribers only. I'm not tech savvy on here and I sign up for all this stuff because we're building a channel. I, you know, go, go across this country to do a bunch of stuff. So, you know, I do anything to kind of generate a revenue. And I did not realize this was set up where you guys could not communicate unless you were subscribers. And I never want to do that to anybody. I want the people that subscribe monthly that want to support us monthly to support us, but I didn't want it to jeopardize the uh, channel or the show. So uh, somebody had reached out to me. It's like, I'm not a member. I couldn't comment. I'm like, it shouldn't be set up that way. And so this morning, I'm like, let me just check to make sure they didn't do anything behind the scenes or something for you guys. And I just want to apologize. It does look like it was on only subscriber only mode. I'm tar I'm really sorry. <laughs> I did not mean to do that. I didn't do it. I think it was just an automatic toggle from the system. So I apologize to you guys. I apologize to you guys, but it should be fixed now. So you guys should be able to say good morning to me. So it's nice to see. Holy crap. We got like almost 100 people in chat right now at before 5 a.m. We're over 100 people in chat right now at 5 a.m. Oh my goodness. Guys, you guys are ridiculous. You guys are ridiculous. <laughs> So let's just get on with our daily, uh, our breaking daily updates. Um, good morning. Happy Tuesday, guys. Um, so Elijah Vu, I'm going to start off with Elijah Vu. He's the three-year-old out of uh, Two Rivers, Wisconsin. He is a beautiful, beautiful, let me find a photo of him. He's just a beautiful little baby. Uh, there it goes. He's just a beautiful little... Oh, no, it didn't quite do it. Hold on a second. He's a beautiful little baby from uh, Two Rivers, Wisconsin. He's three years old. He's been missing for five weeks. Look at that beautiful little baby. Oh, thank you. Thank you. God bless you. And they're looking for him. His mom and her boyfriend are in jail, but they're not cooperating. They're not assisting in any way. They're only in jail for the negligent charges, even though mom has you know, felony charges related to the abuse, um, these neglect charges, as well as Jesse Vang, they're going to go ahead and proceed with the court hearing um, on this case. And it's really, really sad because um, Elijah Vu, they've said that he disappeared. He was wearing these dinosaur shoes and a blanket. It was really cold in Wisconsin when he disappeared. He disappeared in February. And they have found his shoe, one of his shoes, and they found his blanket. There was a hit on a dumpster there, which led him to a landfill. I don't know if they found anything of evidentiary value. They told the world nothing of evidentiary value was there, but that doesn't necessarily mean nothing of evidentiary value was found. So we're still looking for him. The mom just went to court. She pled not guilty for the crimes against her kids. And um, the volunteers were there that have been out. They are searching for him. We're going on almost six weeks with him, definitely over five weeks right now. Uh, mom hasn't broke down. No, no remorse from mom. No remorse from Jesse Vang. No response on where he could possibly be. No Elijah Vu. And the whole entire community is just rocked to his core and completely devastated. The next is Maddie Soto. You guys are very familiar with Maddie Soto. I don't know why it's doing that. There we go. This is Stefan Stearns. This is the animal that is behind bars right now that was that has done unthinkable things to this 13-year-old girl. And it was found when she disappeared. They ultimately found her body two days after they had arrested this man in an area where he was changing his tire. So um, no charges have been brought about over Jen Soto, which is Madeline's mother, or her boyfriend, Stefan Stern. Now, I'm not really on the same bandwagon as everybody else when it comes to Maddie Soto. Um, I believe Jennifer Soto did not know. I believe that Stefan Stern um, used some type of threat to keep Maddie quiet and not tell her family or friends about what was going on with her. That's just my personal opinion, but I don't know. Um, we're going to be getting on to... Sebastian Rogers. He's a 15 year old autistic boy. I'm going to change. If you guys give me just a second, I'm probably going to have to drop this down. I'm going to change the effects just ever so slightly if I can. 
Hold on a second. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, give me just a second. I'm going to change this ever so slightly, and the reason why I'm changing it ever so slightly is because you can't see all the stuff when it's on a still um, related to what I want to talk to you about. This is uh, Sebastian Rogers. He's a 15-year-old autistic boy. This case is breaking uh, apart on on TikTok. It's it people are wanting to know what's going on. It's 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 going crazy on YouTube. This is a social media case. This is a case where the Cajun Navy is involved. We're going to get to the Cajun Navy in a second because I've got a message for them. And um, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not supporting anything with this Cajun Navy. I'm not going to be raising money for them. I will not do anything when it comes to the Cajun Navy with their conduct that they've done. Uh, two of my people, um, not my people, they're people I've, I've worked with. Um, and the Cajun Navy, because they were out there, called the cops on them, were absolutely disgusting to them, were absolutely rude to them, and absolutely think they take over this entire investigation. They don't have the authority to do so, but we're going to get into that in my bitch fest into that in just a few moments. So you guys want to stay, uh, stay tuned. So Sebastian Rogers disappeared on the same day that Maddie Soto disappeared on February 26th. Stories are a little different. But, you know, we still believe that the parents are somewhat involved. If you guys have any questions, I'll get to your questions as soon as I'm wrapped up here. So just bear with me. Um, his mom says that he, that he doesn't have any friends, not on social media. So all these other outside influences and, 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 and dangers are not here in this case. The only person that was allegedly in the home was the mother at the time he disappeared. I really don't believe it. We're hearing a bunch of rumors from she has a drinking problem to she's having an affair with somebody in the uh, neighborhood. Again, th that's not what I'm finding. I know there's a lot of people. You believe what you want to believe, but I'm not out here to lie to my audience about anything. I don't need a click and a view. Um, I do what I do, and I'm going to continue to do it whether people watch what I do or not, right? So I really don't have any anything. There's nothing in me that that need for me to, to, to um, you know, manipulate my audience or say something that's untrue so in this particular case he's been missing mom and dad know nothing supposedly but he couldn't possibly have been injured by anybody else this the biological father seth rogers is going crazy has been out searching taking off time from work he's hurt himself he's injured himself he's getting very little assistance and the the biological mom katie proudfoot his mother and her husband uh, and his stepfather, Chris Proudfoot, have not been at any searches. Their behavior has been very odd. Um, they've been doing some weird, uneasy things. Now they're saying the reason why they ran off is because they heard people were going to be in front of their house. First of all, there's only one person that usually shows up in front of your house, and it's typically me, Bullhorn Betty. And I have t said it time and time again, I'm not going to their house. So are they using that as an excuse or is somebody actually trolling them? And if they're trolling them, you know, I guarantee it's a hate channel on YouTube because that's what these idiots on YouTube do. And uh, they're utilizing resources on Facebook or uh, on law enforcement to over some petty YouTube bullshit. And so I really truly believe it was the hate channels that trolled this family and and got them out of the house. I'm also finding out that these hate channels on YouTube are actually utilizing much needed law enforcement research by calling up to law enforcement and telling them these other creators that are coming into town. Yes, I know. I cannot believe that they did, but they don't care. But as soon as you show up, they'll say, oh my God, they're calling and getting law enforcement resources out there. Um, no, you guys are doing it. You don't realize that? I mean, you're the one picking up the phone and Kyle 911. I mean, it's not me, it's you. So these idiots on YouTube have these petty, um, petty squabbles with other creators on YouTube and it's all over jealousy and money. It's stupidity, you know, it's childish shit. And uh, so two, two of the creators are out there and um, trying to search for this kid. Now, you're talking about two um, searchers. I mean, they have their channels, their news organization type alternative media channels, but they're searchers. That means that they've been to searches. They've been to coordinated searches with law enforcement. They've conducted their own searches. They've been out in the field multiple times. This is their job. This is what they do. They're not SAR certified 
but we're looking for a 15-year-old boy. I'm not going out there to do a grid search to look for evidence, okay? That's not what, I, I'm not equipped to do that. That's not my job to do that. If I see something, I have latex gloves and flags. If I see something, I'm not out there looking for evidence. I'm out there looking for a 15-year-old boy. It's not rocket science. And um, so anyways, Katie and Chris, this is Chris. This is the stepfather. And as you notice down here, there's circles. And the reason why there's circles is those are scratch marks all up and down his arm. This is the first interview he gave after Sebastian Rogers disappeared. And many of my um, counterparts and friends on my social media platforms was reaching out and sending me this picture and saying, did you see his arm? Well, I've been collaborating um, and help, help, like sharing information with another creator on YouTube. His name is uh, Justice for All, and his name's Justin. It's, and I don't like to say Justin because everybody here on TikTok knows Justin on TikTok. Totally different person. Um, uh, just as sweet and just as nice, right? Uh, but just totally different person. And um, he's the one that, that sat there. One of them circled these, but he's the one that told me that Chris called him when that photo of Chris, you know, being at the restaurant circulated. And Chris was more concerned about who took that photo than he was Sebastian. He went on Nancy Grace. Him and Katie Proudfoot went on Nancy Grace last night and said basically um, that they didn't know, that they called the Cajun Navy, even though the Cajun Navy was on. I don't think they realized the Cajun Navy was um, a placeholder excuse me, a placeholder on Nancy Grace last night until after they told their story. And they try to say again that they uh, called the Cajun Navy and speaking to the president. Well, um, Dennis, I think his name's Dennis, or maybe it's David Thrasher. Dennis Thrasher or David Thrasher, I can't remember the guy's name. Um, <clears throat> Thrasher was on, on Nancy Grace's show and basically said, we haven't talked to them, but we've been in contact with Seth Rogers. Um, so I'm still unsure if they've even had contact with uh, the United Cajun Navy. His mom and dad are chasing anybody that's going into that neighborhood out. They're literally chasing him down. I haven't made it there yet, but I'd like I'd like Mama Dukes to come out there and disrupt my um, my walk because I will be searching around there and I will be on public property and I will be conducting myself in a lawful legal manner. And um, I hope nobody interferes with my um, peaceful enjoyment of walking on peacefully down a road on public property. And my, and my my statement to his mother is, if you see me, you don't want to disrupt my walk, babe. I, you might want to do that to JLR and Dolly Vision, and, but you're not going to come at me like that, honey, buddy. It's not going to happen. And I'll put you right in your place, too. And I'll do it live and publicly. And I, you know, I don't mind embarrassing people when I'm out here in the field. I don't mind doing it. I don't want to do it. This is not something I want to do, but I'm not here for them. I'm here to find information about a 15-year-old autistic boy that is missing. Now, <clears throat> now we got a, a gist of the family. Do we believe them? Do we believe what they're saying on Nancy Grace? I do not. I do not believe anything that they're saying um, she left her baby behind. She told the whole world that they can't leave their house. And the first time they have an opportunity to leave their house, they run away. They don't even bother searching for this boy. And they want the whole world to believe that they're innocent. And Nancy Grace is on a fact-finding mission. And God bless her. Because if you guys know anything about me, I was just talking about how everybody that brings these people on there, they're too busy accusing them and not getting enough facts about the day. And um, Nancy Grace went on, um, she went, She did her thing yesterday, and she stayed factual. And she's like, you know, the, we're not in a place of judgment. I'm on a fact-finding mission. And yes, yes, and yes. Love Nancy Grace. And let me tell you about Nancy Grace, okay? Many of you guys know that I'm absolutely in love with Nancy Grace. I, I think she's like my BFF. There's two, there's a few idols I have in the world. Nancy Grace is one of the idols I have in the world. The other idol I have in the world is, I don't know if you guys remember Beth Chapman. It was Dog the Bounty Hunter, Dwayne Chapman's wife, okay? Beth Chapman. If you've noticed anything about some of the people that I love and adore, they are bold women, okay? They are bold women that don't take shit. If that tells you anything about my personality and uh, where I come from, and you know what? Both of those, girl, both of those women are amazing women. They love God, um, and they're bold. They don't take shit. You know, um, I'm a godly person, 
but you don't want to fuck with me. <laughs> I'm just going to say that, you know, you don't want to, especially out there in the field. I get people, people are like, Lord, Betty's mean, right? Lord, Betty's mean. Like I get that all the time. She's mean. Oh, well, you know what? I'm the sweetest damn person. You know, I treat you as you treat me. <laughs> Yeah, I can be uh, I can be mean. I will send you back home to your mama crying. Okay, I will send you back home to your mama crying. So uh, yeah, I can be I can be mean. Okay, so I hope uh, you know his mama and daddy don't. They see me. They just uh, it's bullhorn Betty. Just leave her be, because I will drop a bullhorn on your ass. <laughs> like you know, like I, these other people out there, you just you can fuck with them, but you don't want to fuck with me. Okay. Um, and all joking aside, all joking aside, they ran away. Um, they left their boy behind, their missing autistic boy that they want the whole world to believe that they care about, okay? I'm sorry. It's disgusting. It's disgusting to me. It's disgusting that a mom would leave her son. I don't care if you had me in your front yard with a fucking bullhorn. If you didn't do it, you you stay there and fight for your son. You don't be a coward and run away. You know why? Because that's that. this is pressure, Brush, pressure breaks pipes and you guys are already breaking apart. You are not going to last. You fucked up. I mean, they did. They, they messed up. They messed up so bad. Uh, they messed up with their statements. Their timelines now all over the place. They're adding people that weren't there before. Um, they're, they're not assisting in the searches. Uh, they're threatening the biological dad with a lawsuit over money. Um, and they ran away from home when people were questioning why they're not out there searching for this boy. Um, they said that they can't go because law enforcement told them not to leave the home. And then after that, we found them at a restaurant. And when we called them out on their shit, they couldn't handle the pressure. They packed up their rig and they left town. Don't worry. We know they're in Mississippi. We know they're at the Yogi Bear campground. We know where they are. At. Um, they need to know that wherever they go, People on social media, we've blown this up so much. There's not a place in the United States that they can go right now to hide their pretty little faces, okay? Everybody and their mom is going to be reaching out to a social media creator to let them know where you are at, my friend. And it's because you should be out there searching for your son instead of hiding away from everybody else in this world. That shows that shows guilt and it shows shame. The only people making these parents look like they're guilty is these parents themselves. That's it. That's it. So Seth Rogers, like I said, the bio um, bio dad, has brought in the Cajun Navy. Actually, if you heard Nancy Grace, it's because of the social media creators that reached out to him. Those same social media creators that they are being disrespectful to, that they keep talking down to. Let me tell you, Cajun Navy, I'll tell you this right now. I am a nice person. I really am. And I hope to God that when I get out there, um, you know, I'll do my own thing. I don't need to be around you. Okay. I don't need a click and a view like that. Okay. But let me tell you something. You come at me like you just went after Dolly and JLR. I'm not only going to blow you out of the water. We're going to start talking about your past history, which you don't want everybody knowing about how many times you threaten your volunteers or how many times you guys go after your volunteers and, and, and try to have them put in jail and try to put protective orders when you piss everybody off. So I'm not going to go into the Cajun Navy's history right now about their deplorable conduct and their unprofessional conduct when they're out on these searches. I'm not going to go there, Cajun Navy. You know why? Because I'm Bullhorn Betty and I want to make sure that when I get into town that me and you work well together. OK, so I'm not going to go into those types of things and I'm not going to be hurting your feelings or being disrespectful to the Cajun Navy or their un, un, unsavory history. But I am a searcher. I'm a professional person. I have a channel with a huge platform, several channels with platforms. And the Cajun Navy is going to either respect me or be disrespectful to me. But I will caution them when Bullhorn Betty's there and you're disrespectful to me. Then I go off, and when I go off, I make sure I follow every single law to a, to a T and make sure that when I go out there, I dot my I's. And I would like to make sure that my efforts are going to Sebastian, but if you ever talk to me or call law enforcement on me or have handcuffs put on me because I'm doing my job like you did to JLR yesterday, 
I will take my bullhorn and you will be coughing out my sequins on my bullhorn for the next year. You threaten me when I come out there to give my assistance to looking for a missing kid because you think you run the show. You've got another thing coming. I don't play those games. But what I would like to tell the Cajun Navy is I am going to be out there and I'm going to be out there working my ass off to search for Sebastian Rogers. And I hope that we can work together. But if they think I have to work with them or I owe them some type of duty, no, I don't. You want to call the cops on me? Let me tell you, when I come out to these areas, I don't, I'm not coming out to protest. So I haven't even called my um, civil rights attorneys. I haven't even put them on. I've got people that are willing to represent me free of charge if they violate my civil rights. Okay, so I'm not even really worried about that. I wasn't going to be doing all that. I wasn't going to be, you know, calling these attorney and stuff like that. But now with this nonsense here and knowing that, that the Cajun Navy has called law enforcement on two of uh, the people that I know that are out there right now searching for doing absolutely nothing. They weren't bothering anybody. They weren't doing anything. They were literally live. I absolutely watched exactly what happened and the harassment Cajun Navy provided them. And so the reason why I'm going on this dissertation is because if the Cajun Navy wants to act like this, I can guarantee social media will ruin that nonprofit. And it's not, I'm not going to do it because they're not pissing me off, but they are pissing people off. Um, I'm going to go out there and do my own thing with their permission or without their permission. I don't ask people for permission to do my job. I don't coordinate with people like Cajun Navy to do my job. Um, I work very hard for what I, what I do. I work for um, the answers to these, um, these things. And I'm not going to have a pissing contest with a nonprofit organization. What I will do is I will use my platform to say I will never give them $1 of my support because of their conduct out there uh, in this Sebastian Rogers case. What I will do is say I will never support their organization publicly on any of my platforms. And any time that they are brought up and associated with the case, I wish them the best, but I will make sure I warn everybody about their conduct with volunteers. That's what I can do as a content creator when you have a problem like Cajun Navy being this disrespectful to social media, which is the one that called you in to come out there to begin with. And then when you dis when you have disdain on your breath for people like me, then we have some major problems. But let me just be very clear. I will be out there in Sebastian in Sebastian's area. Unfortunately, I, I was supposed to have the car back yesterday. The mechanic called so I'm sitting tight until Wednesday. I have a funny feeling they're going to monkey F around because I have a funny feeling that maybe something didn't get shipped out when it needed to. Um, whatever the, the case may be, I feel like this is a, um, you know, things happen for a reason. Maybe tensions need to cool down there because let me tell you, I have a pop mouth. I don't know if you ever heard of a pop mouth. It's not a pop mouth. It's a pop, pop, P-O-P, -P, pop mouth. Okay, that means I, I, I've been this way for a really long time. I have no filter on my mouth. So when I think it, it pops out. Okay, so if somebody's in my face screaming at me, my mouth starts going and there's no telling what's going to come out of that mouth. Now, I, I, I tell you when I'm at, this mouth starts running and it's angry and aggravated, it's probably not going to stop until you're in tears. So I just want to caution people about that. I'm not a hard ass, but I'm also not a pushover. So I just want to make sure that everything is set up because I'm pretty sure that the hate channels, because this is going to be posted on YouTube. And hi, thank you for your love and support. And so um, when this is posted on YouTube, I'm sure that the hate channels on YouTube are going to utilize law enforcement resources unnecessarily, again, as they always do with each and every one of these cases. Um, and they're going to be calling these people and letting them know what I say. And I hope that they do. Okay, because I want everybody to understand I don't answer to the Cajun Navy. Um, you know, God bless them for their work. I will never support their work. Um, I've looked into their history. I've looked into their background. And I've looked into how they treat their volunteers and what they have done to their volunteers in the past. And I suggest every single person on social media to do just that. And um, I wish them the best. But they come after me or come at me like they did Dolly Vision and JLR. You better pack a fucking lunch. And any law enforcement officer that wants to come and, and put handcuffs on me and detain me, you better be prepared for a lawsuit. And I'm going to say that 
with all vitriol that I can. I'm not, I, I will now call my attorneys that I have for constitutional matters to make sure that I am protected whenever I go into that state. And it's unfortunate that I have to do this to search for a 15 year old boy that's missing. And it's all courtesy of this nonprofit organization right here. So Cajun Navy, I'm coming in. Better move over and make, make room for the rest of us. Peace out and God bless. Oh, by the way, this is also this morning news break, right? Breaking news updates uh, of, of our cases is a sponsor is, is sponsored by our channel subscribers. So if you'd like to subscribe to this channel again, I'm sorry, I didn't realize I had it on for comments only. Oh, and I forgot to let me change my background so I can see your comments real quick. Hold on a second. Let me get a dark background. There we go. <clears throat> I'm gonna go. To, I'm gonna go through your your questions. And again, I'm really sorry. I did not know that this thing was on. Um, you only could be members. Um, I, I still want you guys to subscribe and support the channel monthly. But I didn't mean to force you guys to do that. Is what I'm trying to say. So I apologize. Cajun Navy has been serving years now. Very successful. Mayflower. And you know what? I, I agree with you. They have. I, I just can't support them. When you're call. When when social media calls you out there, they specifically said. Social media content creators is what brought them into the area for Sebastian Rogers. And then as soon as they get in the area, they start disrespecting social media. No. Fuck no. And um, now they've called the cops on two of my friends that are out there searching. Two of them. They called the cops on them. The Cajun Navy. So they can serve successfully all they want and they can kiss my white breaded ass as well. Call the law on me. We'll see how well it goes for you. Because I will take this, I will take my platforms and I will do everything I can. You don't want to be caught calling on Bullhorn Betty. <clears throat> I heard of at JLR, but I haven't um, made a face with an, he's an asshole. You don't care, whatever. Um, they can't find the re, the uh, most recent case. Is Summer Wells, is she, is she dead? Emma Rose, I truly believe she is. But, you know, there's other people that would, like want to crucify me and come with me at a pitchfork for saying that. But it's my opinion. It's not everybody's opinion. I want to say that, but I've covered the Summer Wells case extensively and uh, it's, it's a recovery mission for me. It's I, I, it, since the day I started going out there, it was never to find her safe and sound. I never, ever thought that the, honestly, the evidence we found never leaned toward that way. <clears throat> Who is, yeah, Franklin, I don't even want to talk about him. He doesn't deserve the plug, to be honest with you. So I'll just leave it at that. He's somebody that hurt me really, really bad. A person I used to work with. Um, he's already there. He's already there. He had the cops called on him yesterday. I was sitting there watching a, a live because I wanted to, you know, I'm nosy. I want to see what's going on out there. And I've got multiple friends in the area that are content creators. Their channels sent them out there. So they record everything. That's what we do. And uh, we share all that information with our audience and with each other. So I was plugging into Dolly Vision's uh, live stream on YouTube. And he's sitting there talking. And, it's, you know, he's... <laughs> Some days he just sits there and stares, okay? You know, if he doesn't have anything to talk about. And, and, you know, some of these things are just sitting and waiting for things to happen, right? So you're out there for hours on end. So anyways, I was there and I was just about to log off. And all of a sudden you hear him say, oh my gosh, there's a lot of cops that just pulled up over here. And like He's like from a distance and he's like, I don't know what's going on over there. Something's going on over there. So he's getting out of the car and he's like, holy shit. He goes, I think it's, I think it's JLR. And I'm like... Huh? They're like, they got him hemmed up. And usually when you hear something like they got him hemmed up, you're thinking that your friends in freaking, um, you know, like clips, you know, like bracelets. And Dolly Vision, listen to this, Dolly Vision was out with me to Savannah, Georgia, and this lady was acting all crazy and shit, and she was trying, she was trying to use her car to make people, th and even though she wasn't going to hit us with the car, she was making us feel in, in fear for ourselves. And she had a bullhorn, and she went to swing a bullhorn at one of the people, and Dolly grabbed it out of her hand, like literally ripped it out of her hand. She he ain't going to do that. So he didn't do anything to her except help somebody else. But he ended up going to jail because, of course, they called the cops on him and tried to say that he he abused this lady. No, she was trying to swing a bullhorn at somebody and he ripped it out of her hand. Long story short. 
So we protested him slap out of jail. He was on he wasn't going to get a bond out. I we went up there. I got my bullhorn out. We live streamed it. The sheriff's running out saying, "Please don't don't do this to my staff." I'm like, "Let him go." Let, let's get up. Let's move us all along really quickly. Let's let's go ahead and get Dolly up out of jail. Tell us what we owe for bond. We're just going to go on our way. We'll get out of your hair, sir. No problem. No problem. So that no bond ended up being a, 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 a an easy bond to post very, very quickly. And our boy was out of jail very, very quickly. So I had a funny feeling if anything like that happened to JLR, whether I liked the man or not, we would be up there with bullhorns getting that man out of jail. Um, and, and, it, and this whole story would be a whole different story. So I really hope that the rhetoric from the Navy, cra- the crazy Navy or whatever, the Navy, the Cajun Navy, sorry, the Cajun Navy, um, you know, tampers down. We, I don't answer to them. I'm not going to call them. I'm not going to coordinate with them, especially after everything they've done right now. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my distance away from them and hope to God I never see them again. Um, that's, that's really what I'm going to do when it comes to the Cajun Navy. Um, I'm just letting you guys, you guys have your own opinions about these organizations that you want to, but, um, I'm allowed and I'm entitled to mine. And when you start trying to throw people that I work with in jail, you, you lost my attention. You lost my support. I mean, I'm sure everybody in my chat can understand that. Oh my God. You never know what uh, happens in the South. That's the crazy part about it though. Well, you know what? I'm from the South. I was born and raised here in Manatee County, Florida, uh, my family pretty much built, you know, the early parts of this. This My county wasn't even a county when my family got here, right? Um, so I'm from the South. I'm from the South South. I'm, you know, and I'll tell you right now, I one thing about me is I, I've been to jail before. I don't mind going to jail. I mean, my when I used to go to jail, it was for stupid shit because I used to drink a lot, do drugs. I was in a bad place in my life in my 20s. Um, you know, as you grow up and you let some of those things go and you heal, Um, life gets a little different for you, but you know, you never know, you you always remember where you came from. There's one thing that I can never uh, take away from me, right? And no matter how much book smarts I get, I can never take away my streets, right? I can never take away my street smarts. I can never take away the stuff that I learned out there in them streets. And, um, that's what carries me through these difficult times in these cases, because I've been through a lot in my life, you know, uh, like many of you have. My life wasn't easy. I, I had a lot of abuses, a lot of childhood trauma. I went to drugs and alcohol. I almost lost my life. Um, I cleaned my life up. I turned my life over to God, and I chose to take my time, the rest of my time here on earth, to give back. And so at first it was to give back politically because I thought we were all victims of our government, which we still are victims of our government. Um, But then it came to other victims, you know, not just all of us. It it started becoming about, you know, Gabby Petito. And that's the one that sucked me into the true crime uh, genre. And then I realized there were real victims out here that needed a strong strong voice and uh, somebody that, that didn't mind um, you know, making waves in these cases to get to the answer. Didn't mind po- applying pressure. You know, it's just taking my skills from politics and applying it to true crime in all reality. And um, that's where all, that's where Bullhorn Betty was derived. <clears throat> I've always had a bullhorn in my hand because I've always been a protester, even in political, um, the political realm. It's just, um, I never really got my name until I went to the um, true crime world. But I can tell you, we've brought a lot of answers to social media. Uh, We've changed the dynamic of true crime. We've changed the dynamic of um, um, citizen journalists. Um, We've pioneered going out and filming from the scenes and not leaving up to mainstream media. We pioneered that. Uh, We've done a lot over the years, and um, I'm very blessed with what we've done. You know, we, there's three people here that changed the landscape uh, on social media, and we're watching the fruits of those labor, of that labor, flourish, and we're watching it flourish right here on this case when you see all of those social media content creators actually out there helping searching. That didn't happen once upon a time. People sat at their home behind the computer talking about these cases from their home. We're forcing them out in the field to talk about these cases from the front lines. And when you're out there and you have a body out there, guess what they're doing? Whether they like it or not, they're actually helping because they can't help but to talk to people. They can't help but to look around. They can't help but to participate in the search. 
So I'm very blessed with that. All right, guys. You guys have heard me bitching and complaining enough. The Cajun Navy, I, I, I think they need to keep to um, searching for people in natural disasters because I can tell you um, they're going to be mixing with the true crime community like oil and water. And I can tell you at this case, at this juncture, this is not working out. This is not going to be a partnership that I will ever work with again. Um, I definitely will not be calling the Cajun Navy in for any other case. This was a hot mess. This was disgusting. And, um, you know, fuck them and shame on them for that matter. So, um, I, and you know what? At the end of the day, even, uh, even Riley Strain, what did they do? You know who, who did everything in that case? Social media. So, and I have a funny feeling that's what's going to happen in this case as well. So we'll see how it works out. Um, but the Cajun Navy, mm -mm, we're not, we're not working with them no more. Mm -mm, nope. Let, the, let them go to mainstream media because they don't need the help of social media. And social media probably shouldn't be uh, talking about them anyways as much disdain as they have for social media. If you don't believe me, go to just about any of their press conference and you will hear them talking down to, to social media yet again. Well, screw you. We are powerful and we can rock the world. And not only that, but we find answers to these cases. You know, they may find people out there in natural disasters, but this is a much different type of situation. God bless you.